Hey DIYers, now I'm sure we've all seen on YouTube where they've made those cross-cut sleds for their big fancy table saws. Today we're making one for our bench top, or sometimes they're called job site, table saw. Now we're going to make one for this Harbor Freight version, which is a Hercules table saw. And it's done very well for me for the price. I didn't have to go out and spend hundreds of dollars on the yellow version. So we're just going to build a basic, nothing fancy, a couple little options on it, cross-cut sled. So let's get going. And my cross-cut sled's going to be three foot wide by two foot deep. And the three foot part, it'll give me about 15 and a half inches on this side of the blade and about 20 inches on this side of the blade. And that should be good. So the first thing I need to do is cut my plywood down to three foot. And so I don't get a bunch of rip out and tear out. I'm going to put some tape over the line. Now it doesn't matter if I can't see the line because well, the saw guide's going to do the work. As you can see, I got me a nice clean cut doing that. Now this is half inch plywood. And before you're getting all freaky in that, that's not what the full thickness of my base is going to be. It's going to wind up being an inch thick. And you'll see why here in a minute why I'm doing it this way instead of just getting a three quarter inch thick piece to start with. So don't throw this off cut away. There's nothing special about this plywood. I got it from Home Depot. It's half inch radiata pine. So the runners from my miter sled that fit in the tracks on my table saw I'm making out of this plastic. It is a UHMW plastic and I'll leave a link for it down below but I happen to get this at my local Granger store. Now you may see a lot of them have used like hardwoods like maple or something to make theirs and they've cut theirs and milled them. I didn't want to go to all that trouble. Some of them actually get the real expensive metal ones that got the adjustments on them to do. I didn't want to do that either. So I got this plastic and I got this because it's not going to change with the weather as far as how thick and how wide it is so it's not going to hang up in there. So I got it at a four foot length. I'm going to cut it into two two foot strips here with my miter saw. Already I got the plastic fitted for the tracks. It's nice and tight. They fit in there both of them and some of you might recognize this if you watch my miter saw tune up video and this is just a flat piece of aluminum. They've got some self adhesive sandpaper on it. It's 120 grit. I just went back and forth nice and easy on both sides till I got it to where it slide into track real good. And now it's time to attach it to the base I've already cut. But first, need to put some pennies in the slot to hold it up so that when I stick the board on here, I'll put my glue on here and stick my board on here, it'll be above the surface and stick to it. Now, some of you might be asking, why did I use quarter inch? Why didn't I use three eighths? I wasn't hundred percent perfect. This was all three eighths and I didn't want to get a three eighths, put it in here and it wound up being proud. Then I had to sit here and sand and sand and sand until it worked. So I just got something that's a little thinner and it'll fit in there. So basically I'm going to put a bunch of pennies in here. Then I just put the track on here. That keeps it elevated above the table. Now before I glue these on here I want to roughen one surface up just a little bit because it's really smooth so that the glue will stick and that's plenty. When I go to glue this down I'm going to take my best side which is this side. See that one's not as good with the knots on it. Best side down so it'll be the smoothest. And then I'm just using tight bond. I'm using medium thick. Put a little on here. Just need it to hold it down long enough till I can get it attached with some screws. I'll leave a link to everything I'm using here, but I got medium thick and thin and I'm just using medium. Take the activator. I already pre-marked where the tracks go. So next time I make the fences for the front and the back. That way they can be set up in clamps and drying. I can work on some other stuff. So I've got some three quarter inch plywood here. I got it's leftover plywood. It's not your Baltic birch or your maple, not even that radiata pine. It's going to be perfect for this. It doesn't have to be dead on beautiful. I mean, if you want it to be, go out and buy a sheet, but I didn't want to go buy a whole sheet. Basically what I'm going to do is cut these into about 37 inch lengths. I got my table saw set up. I'm cutting them to four inches wide. The reason four inches is when I raise this all the way up to every tip top of the blade is about three and an eighth to three and a quarter. So that gives me a good three quarters of an inch of room above that so I don't cut all the way through it. Because if you remember when you do your sled you wind up cutting like this and it cuts into the fence here and there and you don't want it to go all the way through and cut it in half. Now what I'm going to do is I got just tight bond two which is plenty good for this. I don't need the three for exterior. I'm not going to be doing this out in the rain. It's fine. I've got a four foot level and a bunch of clamps. Now I saw this technique on Katz Moses who said he got it from tomorrow by three by three customs and basically i'm gonna glue these together clamp them to this level so it keeps the boards perfectly straight and they can't warp or bend or anything and i don't have a fancy glue spreader but i do have a finger you should see them smear all that glue on there or put all that glue on there and think man what a waste but you know it doesn't go as far as the as i thought it would i'm definitely going to get me one of them glue spreaders it'll go faster smear it around real good and you don't have a lot of working time especially out here in this hot sun today i'm gonna let that set up then i'll do the other one here's where i'm gonna differ a little bit instead of just 
just a standard old crosscut sled. I already raised the blade up and made a hole to mark where the blade is. I've got two lines drawn here three inches apart. What I'm going to do is make replacement throat plates to go in here. I've got a three inch gap here, so I'll have three inch wide throat plates I can put in here. Say the one I'm going to have in here gets all nasty and ugly, I can take it out and put a new one in. One throat plate will be for just 90 degree cuts. I can have another one for 45s, another one for 30s or 22s, and then I can just have an extra just you know to do whatever when you start making bevel cuts your zero clearance goes out the window so i'm gonna cut a piece to fit here and a piece to fit here i'll cut three replacement throat plates here and half inch isn't thick enough to have this alone i already see my half inch kind of doing this when i go to glue these other pieces down on it i'll have to have them weighted down so that it gets it good and flat but i'm also going to put screws in the bottom i thought about having plans down below for this crosscut sled but then i realized it's only going to be good for my specific saws if you got a dewalt a makita whatever you have it's going to vary because of where your t slots are going to go how wide you want it and that sort of stuff i'll just let you know what the measurements are through the video and this first cut's going to be 15 and 5 8 that gets me from the blade to the fence and the board that goes on this side needs to be 17 and 3 8 inch wide i got this tape here because that's a no glue zone i found an old disposable cheapy brush I'm going to use to spread this with because it's got to be faster and better than using my hands. All right, I'm not going to worry about those couple brush hairs in there. Let that set up. Got to run to the store, get more glue anyway, and I'll come back and do that other side. All right, that's set long enough. I can roll it over. I'll put some number eight by three quarter inch screws in here. I got it all marked off where I want them evenly, of course, and I'll also put some in this T track strip here. And I want it just so the head of the screw is just below surface I'm not going to rub on the table saw table now when I screw these in I'm not cranking on them real hard so I don't want to drive them all the way through to the other side went and got some more glue actually I just got a whole gallon filled this up paintbrush method used to seem to work pretty good last time so I'm gonna do it again I'll put this on and I'll rub it around I'm gonna take one of my three inch throat plate pieces as a spacer put it in here against it put some weights on here let this sit for a while and I'll come back and do the same thing that I did over there. They set up all night in the clamps. This one's out of the clamp. Nice and straight. Beautiful. Clean that up. Nice and straight. No daylight. All right, now I'm just going to run it through the table saw on each side to clean the edges and the glue up and get them good and straight and all of them even. And I'm only shaving off just a smidgen of a bit to get it all taken off and smooth. Now I need to clean one end of the, each fence up and then cut them to length. Okay, I got everything cut to size. Now I'm going to take and do a round over on these edges on the ends just to smooth them off so they're not so sharp. And I'm going to cut down some of the waste on this back fence so it's not as heavy. And I just took a can and traced around the edges and I'm just going to take I don't have a bandsaw so I'm going to use a jigsaw. I use my random orbital sander 80 grit sandpaper. Got the contours all smoothed out. Got the burn marks off. Now I'm just going to take some 180 sandpaper go back over it smooth it just a little more. Demonstrate how these throat plates are going to work and basically there's going to be a notch back here. These will slide right under. I still got something I'm going to fasten them down with. That's how they're going to come in and out. Now I'm going to get a round over bit set up in a router. Round over these edges. I decided to go with a quarter inch round over bit using my DeWalt handheld and I'm just going to do the top edge on each side. Now I'm not doing it to my front fence. In fact I may have screwed up a little bit by rounding this but we'll see. It's one of the two luxuries I'm going to have on my cross cut sled or hold down so I've got to have slots in the table here for the t-track to go in in order for these t-bolts to go in and have these hold downs on now I don't have a table saw to do dados so I'm gonna have to use a router to do this basically I need a router three quarters of an inch wide three eighths of an inch deep so I've got a half inch mortising bit so I gotta make two passes to get three quarters of an inch wide I'm only going half as deep as I need to so I've got to make two passes to get the full depth now I screwed up on this one I don't need to pass all the way through at this end because my fence will be here I do have to leave a little of a gap because I want to be able to put those t-bolts in and out in case I want to get them out of there and, and have the full length of this to use so this one I don't know I might put some filler in there I may leave it alone and there's nothing magical about where I set these grooves the biggest thing is I made sure is when it was in and all the way turned like this it wouldn't interfere with the blade that's the biggest thing I did all right one final detail before we can start putting all this together and I need to chamfer this bottom edge of the face to be so sawdust and stuff doesn't accumulate now, I don't have a bit for my router for that but I do have these woodpecker edge tools that I bought when it sits flat it's got a little groove for the shavings to go away in. So before I start putting this together, I got one other thing I got to do, and that is I got to get a fastening system put in 
for my removable throat plate. This line here and this line here represents the width of my exchangeable or removable or replaceable throat plate. So that leaves me this area here for fasteners. I wind up just splitting the difference and I got four holes I'm going to drill for my fasteners. What I'm going to use to fasten with are these quarter inch T-nuts. So I got these pre-marked out. I got a piece of wood under here to kind of brace it. I'm using a three quarter inch Forstner bit. The hardest thing is not to drill too deep. Now I'm going to take a quarter inch drill bit and drill each one of these out. Bolts that go in there are quarter by 20s. I already have one throat plate in here. I've got four of them made, so I'm going to put one each one through and keep drilling the hole. That way these are all pretty drilled and ready to go. Now all my holes are pre-drilled. Now i got to drill a hole for this to fit down into. So I basically I took my digital calipers and put on there and found out that that width was 1964. So I just happened to have a 1964 bit. And we'll just go right through the hole I've already done. All right, I got the whole bottom surface sanded. Got all my pencil marks off, these little scuff marks here. And then I just got a socket here I'm going to take and use to drive it. Fits perfectly. The little bolt is not sticking up through the plywood. My zero clearance throat plate fits right in. I'll just take a half inch countersink bit here. And just like that it's bolted in below the surface. Not going to stick up. Now we're going to put these T-tracks in. I don't have a whole lot of thickness here in order to put screws in. So instead I'm going to epoxy them in and not worry about putting screws. Because even if I get a screw the most the longest it could be is a half inch. And that's not a lot of meat to grab onto in order to crank on so I'm going to epoxy these in. Earlier I made this oops somehow I cut deeper on one side than the other. So I made a shim because well I'm just OCD like that and I'll epoxy that shim in. And I'm just using Gorilla Glue's five minute epoxy. Honestly I've never used this stuff. Nice thing is it's got a little cap I can recap this when I'm done. One thing to do different on yours than I didn't do on mine and I didn't find out till I was routering these grooves out is your screw pattern on the back side. Make sure they're not going to interfere with these grooves otherwise you're going to do like me and cut them as you can see here. I cut in both of them grew tips off with my router bit. I'm not too concerned there's still a half inch that it's holding on to and with this two minute epoxy holding it in should be fine. I went ahead and used some of that epoxy I had left over put in these holes around the t-bolts as you can see here to fill those in so that they'd stay in place and not loosen up. And I'm gonna give it one final sand. I'm gonna go ahead and take some of this Johnson's paste wax, wax up the bottom of this and get it all waxed up and I'm just gonna leave it. I'm not gonna worry about buffing it out right now and just let it all soak in for a while. So I contemplated back and forth for quite a while to put screws in or not put screws in. I know I epoxied it in. You know, is it going to hold? It says it's supposed to. So I went ahead and decided I'm going to put some screws in. I'm going to take a VIX bit here, which is just a self-centering drill bit. And these are just number six by half inch screws. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mix up a little epoxy. I'm going to put two or three drops in each hole and set the screws in there so the epoxy will fill in the wood and the screws and help anchor it a little more. All right, so the next thing I need to set up is for my stop block. I've got this 36 inch double T-track designed to go in here and my stop block will go on here and then I've got a ruler that's going to go in here. This is a Cat's Moses stop block. So I've determined that this is 23 30 seconds. I've got my height set for the depth of this thing here so my groove is deep enough and we're just going to run this through. My blade's an eighth inch wide. I believe that's an eighth inch it might be just a little over. All right, let's see if that's wide enough. It's just a hair tight. I'm going to move the blade over just a tad and run it through one more time. I got this to fit real nice and tight. What I wound up having to do is, as you see on this, is that one edge is a perfectly 90 square corner and the other one has a taper to it. It was that tapered corner that was the problem. So I just took and moved my table saw blade over a sixteenth of an inch, cut a new slot right next to it, and now it fits down in there beautifully and tight. And then the next thing I did is I went ahead and pre-drilled holes, and I'm going to go ahead and place a couple screws. I'm just using two inch exterior screws is all I'm using. The heads fit down inside the counter seat really nice. So what I'm going to attempt to do is use my miter saw and the bevel and just keep moving it over and slicing a little bit at a time try and cut away as much of this as I can and then I'll file the rest. That's what I was after and I'll smooth the rest of this out with a file. I got that all filed nice and smooth no sharp edges as you can see I just took a metal file and, and what I'm gonna do is put epoxy down in here set this in here roll these pieces of tape up so the epoxy don't run out the end and screw it in and then we'll let that sit. So I got my 
front fence clamped on here. I'm gonna do some pre-drilled holes. One thing to note, know where you're putting your screws ahead of time. I got a bunch of them. They should have probably been in another inch from where they were. I forgot that I was gonna be screwing the fence on here and so they're kind of in the way and I'm having to kind of go around them. So I got them set about three quarters of an inch. Then I'm gonna put three in this section, put one here and two in this section. All right, just like before, I'm gonna use two inch exterior screws. Now right here, I'm gonna put a three inch screw. And when I turn this over, you'll see why. And I put that three inch screw right here because of this extra thickness. When you're putting this fence on, I just tried to get it flush against the back and the ends. Square doesn't really matter. The square is gonna matter down here. So I've put two coats of wax on this. I just put them on there and left them and haven't buffed them off and they've soaked in. But I'm gonna give it one final sand up here where I put these screws in. I'm gonna take this off because I wanna put glue on here and then re-screw it. Got this piece of tape on here because I don't want any glue going up past there. Remember we got a chamfered edge. I wanna keep that chamfered edge clean. So I'm gonna put the glue on here instead of on this because I don't want a bunch of glue down in these slots here. And I don't want it real heavy because honestly I don't want a lot of squeeze out. And two, I got my screws to help clamp it too. Now I'm gonna have the screws come up through the holes a little bit so it'll help set where the fence goes so I don't slide around. This is attached, waxed all of this. I didn't wax this fence, waxed all of this fence, the bottom again. I put my zero clamps throat plate in, got it waxed. I got this set on here. I've got these clamps where I want this fence. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna bring my blade up and cut this area here. Then we're gonna get this screwed on, get it squared and get this project done. So I got this fence clamped on, flush with this edge as it can be. This fence has to be adjusted to be square with the blade. So you can only put two screws in. I got a mark here and at that end. From this mark to this mark, I've got it to where it's 34 and a quarter inches and that'll become important here in a minute. Now I am gonna use three inch screws for this. Again, just three inch exterior screws because of how thick this is. It's gonna take a lot of abuse. So I want a lot of holding power. Slides real nice against there. Now one thing I did off camera is I shortened this fence by about five eighths. I want it to be half inch, but I screwed up and it's five eighths of an inch shorter, which makes it about an eighth inch shorter than the height of this. And the reason I did that was because my Cat's Moses block all the way down like this, it still had a pretty good size gap under here and I didn't want it. But that extra eighth inch screwed up and now makes it too tight. Alrighty, we're ready to do a squaring up method for the fence. Now I've got a piece of scrap plywood here. You wanna have a piece of plywood that is fairly long this direction and I'll show you why here in a minute. But anyway, we're gonna do what they call the five cut method. Many of you may have heard of this, seen it, maybe you haven't. For the five cut method, you're gonna need your piece of scrap plywood. I got a quarter inch piece of scrap plywood here. So the first thing you need to do, label this side number one, turn it 90 degrees clockwise, number two, continue on, number three, one more time, number four. Now you're back to your original number one, put a plus because that'll be your fifth cut. And then at this end, put an A, and at this end, put a B. Now we're gonna take and just make four cuts on each side of this board. And you only need to take a little bit. You don't need to take very much on these first four cuts. So just a little more than a blade width will be just fine. And what this is doing is by doing four cuts like this, it's magnifying the amount that you're off. And so it makes it easier to calculate as to how far you're out of square and to adjust your fence. Now for this fifth cut, you wanna take about an inch and a half cut. So we'll take this fifth cut. So now we gotta calculate some stuff. First, you need to get you some digital calipers. You need to measure the length of A, 1.4565. You need to measure B, 1.722. Now we're gonna take a, subtract it from B, and it'll be a negative number, and you want to keep that negative number. And we get 0 0.2655. And you take that number and divide it by the number of cuts, which was four of them. We get how far we're out for one cut, and that's going to equal minus 0 0.066375. Now what you need to do, you need to know the total length of your board that you cut here. And mine is 11 and just a little over 3 16 so I said 7 30 seconds. So you're going to divide that by that 11. You're going to take that 7 30 seconds and put it into a decimal. And what this is doing is telling you how far you're out per linear inch. And that equals minus 0 0.005. Nine. And so we're out by 59 thousandths of an inch. Now what you need to do in order to determine how much you need to move your fence is multiply this by the length of your fence. And the length of your fence is gonna be determined by where your screws are. So since mine cuts to this direction, I'm gonna move it 
here like this. So this is my pivot point. So that line there is in the center of where that screw is. And this line here is in the center where that screw is. And that happens to be 34 and a quarter inches. So when we multiply that by 34 and a quarter, that equals a minus 0 0.203. So I'm almost a quarter inch out. That's a lot. I've taken, I call them feeler gauges for like spark plugs. You can get at any automotive shop. And I've got setup blocks. And I got a 3 16th inch setup block. And then I've got a 2,000th and a 15 hundredths of an inch. And I put all these together and that comes up to my actual point. 203 inches that I need. Got a board here, point on it, and my pivot point is about one and a half inches in. Now, I said this was a negative number, which means I gotta move that fence that direction to correct. So I'm gonna set all this up here and put this point pretty close to where that pivot point is. Take my feeler gauge and my setup block, set them in there. I'm gonna push this kind of tight. It should be able to move pretty freely, and it does. Now, take that screw out and move the fence in. Now, we move the fence in until it touches, and we reclamp. Now, we gotta re screw another hole for the screw to fit in. You can't put it back in the same hole, obviously, because it'll wanna wiggle back to it. So, now you guessed it. We go back through and make five more cuts again, label them one, two, three, four, and then five. I'll go through make these cuts. So with my OCD the way it is, I went through and did this about six times to get it as accurate as I possibly could and to where I'll accept it. And I got it within 1.8 ten thousandths of an inch per inch of accuracy, and that's beautiful. This is for a job site or bench top table saw. This ain't for some $5,000 table saw. So I think that's really good. The one thing I found out that the big guys, those with the big table saws can't do is, is when they do their five cuts, They've got to put a screw in here, do their cuts, do their measurements. Okay, they're off. Take that screw out, make another measurement, drill another hole, put another screw in, and do their measurements. Since my crosscut sled hangs off the end here, I could put a clamp on, make my cuts, make my adjustments, reclamp, make my cuts, readjust, and so forth. And when I had it dialed in right where I want it, then I screwed my holes. That's kind of a nice little benefit, actually. But we've got this as dead on as dead on gonna be. All right, I got two more things to do, and this project's done. Now I need to set up a tape measure system. So what I'm gonna use is this T-Track measure kit from Rockler that I got. Comes with a 48-inch tape measure in it. Now you gotta know whether you need to measure from right to left or left to right when you get it, because there's one for each. And so mine's right to left, because this is designed to go in this T-track. Basically, you've got these little inserts here that you snap together, you put into the T-track, and then there's some set screws I'm gonna get out that you screw in here, keeps this up against the top here, instead of laying down inside the T-track. They didn't have a 36 inch, so I'm gonna have to waste a little bit. I'm gonna have it hang off the end here. I'm actually gonna cut this to the curve, just to make it look neat. It comes with a marking gauge. If you happen to use the Rockler's flip down stops, that's what it's for, but I'm using a Cat's Moses, so I won't need this. Now it says cut this with a hacksaw. I'm gonna try and cut it with these cutters, finish it off with some sandpaper, and make it all look nice and pretty. Now I've set this stop up to be six inches away from the blade, and it's the tooth that's Go in that direction. Remember, you got teeth that go each direction. I set it purposely at six inches because that's as wide as my digital caliper will go. Yes, I'm gonna dial it in that close. Well, I'm sure gonna try. All right, so let me cut this and measure it and see what we got. All righty, so according to my tape measure, I am dead on six inches. According to my calipers, I am 5.993. So I'm seven thousandths off. I can live with that, I guess. Human eye is gonna be off that much every time. So now we gotta get the tape measure in here. Luckily, this tape measure will slide right underneath there and I can set it in here. Now what I'm gonna do, take a piece of tape, tape it in place once I get it set so it don't move. And again, we're gonna set it right to this edge, dead eyeball as I can. We can take the stop block out. This is set where it's supposed to be. Take the adhesive backing off. Got this stuck down real good. We'll pull it back to here, pull my tape off. I cut the end of this off with some side cutters. This is a metal tape. All right, we got that all set. Let's make a test cut. I got it set at 10 inches. I got it set where you can just barely see the line. 10 inches on the nose. The last thing I need is a blade protector out the back. As you see, to get all the way here, this blade sticks out, and I'm invariably going to hit a finger on it. So when I was doing the fences, I knew I was going to have this, so I went ahead and 
glue it up four blocks of the three quarter to make this. I'm gonna have it stick up about just an eighth inch above the bottom of this. So when it runs across here, it doesn't hang up. Rounded all the edges with the router, a quarter inch round over a bit, just like these are, sanded it up. The only thing left to do is glue it on there. I've got an eighth inch spacer block I'm gonna put down and I'll clamp it in place. And again, I'm just gonna use my tight bond two glue. Alrighty, we'll let this set up for a few hours and we'll come back and test the replaceable throat plate. And with that, our sacrificial blade guard is glued on and done. At least that's what I'm calling it. Mine's three inches thick, which is four three quarter inch pieces of plywood. As you can see, I cut some already with it and it went through at least two and started to hit the third one. So you definitely need at least three of them on here if you do two three quarter inch pieces of plywood for your fence here. This is a rather basic cross cut sled and this is the first one I ever built. One other little note, take your removable throat plate out before you glue your blade guard on. Otherwise I'll It'll get glued tight. You see, it's very easy. Just take these screws out, and out comes your throat plate. So you see, the table saw sleds aren't just for the big and fancy anymore. It's easy to make one to custom fit your bench top or job site table saw. If you like this jig and you want to see some others that I made, click on this playlist right here. It'll take you to them. So get out in the shop and build something. Until next time, happy DIY.